<laughs> All right, we've got, I'll wait about one more minute just to make sure I don't want to get started and let anybody else come in. So we'll wait about one more minute. If you did not, I think Megan caught everyone on the way in. So you've got a benefits guide. Um, that is the same one that we also emailed out yesterday. So you have a digital version of it if you need that as well. Um, and then this is the paper version. It will, the digital version will also be posted on our website. So you'll have access to that. Um, but I would hang on to this guide because it is an overview of all of your benefits that you'll need as we progress through the year and you might need to use them. So we'll wait just one more minute and then we'll jump in. All right, well, it's 10 o'clock, and I want to be respectful of your time so that we can go through this. So welcome to our open enrollment benefits presentation. We're super excited about this change, and I hope that you will be as well. So just really quickly, we're going to run through what the plan overview looks like, um, and then what you are going to need to do during open enrollment, how that process will look just like last year, um, and then details on the plan options and then the communications and resources if you need them. So our new benefit plan will be effective July 1 of 2023. Um, we have a medical plan that will be administered by Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Carolina. It is a PPO plan, um, and we'll kind of dive further into those details of what that means. The dental plan will be administered by Delta Dental, and then the vision plan will be administered by Delta Vision. We will have the flexible spending account like we've had in years past, and that will be administered by Flores, and we'll offer you the healthcare FSA and a dependent care FSA. So if you um, are not familiar with those, we can certainly speak with you one-on-one -on -one, um, about what that provides. It's a pre-tax benefit, certainly very helpful. So our annual enrollment will run from May 1st through May 15th. Um, you will, and I don't think we have any new hires in here, so that really wouldn't apply here, but um, that annual enrollment, you will be expected to log in to ESS and complete your elections. Um, You'll need to, before that time, review the benefits guide. You're here listening to this information. Be prepared to make your elections. Um, you'll determine what you want to cover, the coverage tier. Um, and then you must log in to ESS and elect the benefit. So it's active enrollment. If you don't complete ESS active enrollment, then we'll probably call you. And if we don't hear from you and you still don't complete it, then we take that as you don't want benefits. So please log in and complete that. Um, and then again, you've got your benefits guide to kind of help you. And if between now and then, our office will be able to help answer questions and to guide you through that process if you need it. But the process itself in ESS will be the same. When they do ESS this year, no change will not be an option. Okay. Because they're gonna, we're changing Completely the deduction new. numbers. So if you had employee family this year and you want employee family next year, don't click no change. That should not be an option. We don't okay. have it set up yet, but it's a different deduction. Okay. And you will probably also need all of your dependent information because it will be a new deduction. And so I'm not certain that that information will pull over. Now, if you have an individual issue and you don't have a dependent social security number, we might be able to get that for you and help you with that. But to make that process go as smoothly as possible, get all that information together first. So any dependents that you plan to cover, you're going to need their date of birth and their social security number. So, and then just touching on what the cafeteria plan. So basically a cafeteria plan means that it is a pre-tax deduction. So our medical, our dental um, is all through pre-tax. Um, so is the vision and then the flexible spending and the dependent care. In addition to these that we're offering through NCHIP or Gallagher, who is our new broker with the North Carolina Health Insurance Pool, 
There are also other policies, both pre-tax and post-tax, that you have available to you through such vendors as AFLAC, Colonial Life. Those are the short-term disability policies, cancer policies, so on and so forth. This is open enrollment, so if you want to make changes to those policies that you have or sign up for a new policy, now would be the time to do that. Um, and we can set you up with their information. AFLAC should be here at Health and Wellness Day on May 5th. But again, if you're interested in any information from AFLAC Colonial Life, reach out to our department and we can help you with that. Um, and then these are the life events. So if at any point during the year any of those things were to happen, that would qualify you for a life event to make changes to your health um, insurance. Otherwise, you cannot change once open enrollment is complete. And you have 30 days, and it says it, from that date of that life <coughs> event to make that change. So um, if you get married, if you have a child, um, if you lose health insurance, if you're covered through your spouse's coverage elsewhere, you'll have 30 days from that date. You need to contact us as soon as it happens so that we can get you signed up. Any questions on that so far? So this is your, um, just a quick snapshot of your employee benefit guide. Again, you have a digital version of it and then the paper copy of it. We will post this to our website. And um, so if at any point you lose your benefits guide and you need to go out and look at it, it will be available in the digital version. So let's talk about our medical plan. So we are moving to a traditional copay PPO plan. Um, so N network, the annual deductible will remain essentially the same as what it was. It's $1,500 for an individual. And then N network, that deductible is 3,000 for a family. The co-insurance is 20%, so basically we're on an 80-20 plan. However, your basic office visits to a doctor are going to be copay. So in other words, on July 5th, if you go visit your primary care physician, it's a $25 copay. There is no deductible to meet before that copay applies. It applies on day one, right? Um, Yay. Yay, so that should be excellent. If you need to go visit a specialist, it's a $50 copay. Um, if you need to go to urgent care, it's $75, and then we will still offer telehealth. So if you've got something that can be discussed and viewed over the phone and they can help you out, it's $15 for that. And we'll delve further into that. Um, an emergency room visit, Let's hope you don't have to, but if you do, it's a $300 copay. That's it. If you were admitted to the hospital, then that's waived, and then it becomes inpatient. When it's inpatient, then that's when we look at, or even an outpatient situation at the hospital, that's where we're looking at the 80-20 coverage. Um, so, and then your out-of-pocket max, we've been able to take that down $1,000. I believe last year we were at $6,000 out-of-pocket max. This year is $5,000 for an individual. Um, everything that you spend applies towards your out-of-pocket max, including the co-pays. Um, so that will kind of calculate in. Now, the co-pays don't apply towards your deductible. They're, they're separate. The co-pays, because they start on day one, they don't really apply. That includes the emergency room co-pay of 300. Those also don't. Those also go to, they all go to your out-of-pocket max, but not towards not to your deductible. Um, and then you'll see the hospital services, inpatient and outpatient, are 20% after your deductible is met. But in the event the emergency room co pays way because you were in, <coughs> then that goes back to the deductible. Exactly. If you haven't met that yet, then you don't get the 80 20. You're right. Paying, you're paying full cost up to $1,500. Up to $1,500. <laughs> but just keep in mind that if, and again, we hope this doesn't happen, but let's suppose that you are hospitalized. The hospital doesn't say, pay us before we'll see you. The yeah. hospital will bill you, and so that's where it's nicer that the deductible comes into play for that because then hopefully we can make out a payment plan if we need to do that. But for your regular office visits, it's a copay. You know what to expect on day one, what you would pay. That's nice. Any questions on that? Um, oh. The part down at the bottom? Yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, thank you. So Blue Cross Blue Shield said we typically offer your first three visits to your primary care as no charge. 
So you get three free visits to your primary care. Why do we do that? Because we want you to go see your primary care for preventative reasons. Now, obviously, your preventative annual wellness is covered, but again, we want you to take take care of yourself, right? So if you go see your primary care for something before it becomes a huge issue, you don't even have to pay for it. But you have to register. You have to register them. You absolutely do. And you'll see that on the blueconnectnc.com. Um, you do have to designate who your primary care physician is. So you can change that if you need to at some point throughout the year. You just have to register that. Any questions on that? So preventative care, like we mentioned, just like with Cigna, that's um, covered at 100% of your in-network providers, the office. Um, so that's well baby, well child, your routine physicals, immunizations, routine screening tests, anything that is a routine preventative care um, with your primary care going through. Um, and you can go on that website and they'll give you the complete list of what they consider preventative care. But again, that's covered at 100%. And I believe that comes from ACA to some degree, the Affordable Care Act, where they dictate what is considered covered. So then the telemedicine, right, where we mentioned $15 copay. So these are the things that you can um, go and use. And again, there's three ways to sign up. You can download the Teladoc app. After July 1, you can have access to that. You can call 1-800-TELEDOC or you can go to the bluecrossnc.com slash teledoc and click get started now. But um, allergies, cold or flu, ear problems, headache, insect bite, skin infections, rashes, you got into um, some poison ivy and it's clear that's what it is and you don't want to necessarily go, or it happens on a Saturday and you want them to call in something. So um, again, it's $15 and it's available 24-7, 365 because we all know that sometimes you don't get sick Monday through Friday, nine to five when the doctor's office is open, right? So that's a great benefit. And again, it's a $15 copay. So let's talk about NCHIP. So that's the acronym that we use, N-C-H-I-P. It is the North Carolina Health Insurance Pool. And that is what we have entered into, which is a risk pool through the state of North Carolina. Um, I think there are 27 members right now. It is county governments and municipalities with at least 75 employees. And so the benefit to that is that we share the risk across the group if we have high claims. And so it kind of lessens the impact to us. So anyway, NCHIP though, they um, Gallagher will be our broker and NCHIP is the overall umbrella program. But if you need help, you can call that 1-800 number Monday through Friday, eight to nine. Um, and then you can also access it by blueconnectnc.com. So far, our experiences with working with them are they're very responsive and they're very helpful. So this number, when you call that concierge number and tell them you're from Curry Tech, they will be able to pull up what our benefits are and speak to you directly about um, what issues you might have or what help you need, and they can direct that. So we're super excited to have that sort of level of employee support. Can they answer questions now or wait till I would absolutely call them, and I've had a few questions that we've sent just for specific things, and so they are aware they know what we have. Absolutely, they're there to help. We want to make this transitional process as easy as possible for everyone. We tried to call them earlier and said we needed a group number. They couldn't answer any of the questions. Okay. Well, then that is good to know. I will see what I can do about getting that group number. I know we are still working through um, that process to get that assigned to us from, from Blue Cross Blue Shield, but they were doing the group build. We met on Tuesday and said they were working on that, so we should have a group number soon. I have a unrelated yeah, sure. question. Okay. Will there be only employee only and family, or will there be employee plus dependent on child? I guess. Yeah, yeah we're going to get to that too. Okay. We'll have that. I'm, I'm jumping ahead. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We'll talk about the coverage tiers. Um, and so in the in the interim, if there's something that you have a specific question about until we get that group number, um, I can try to answer it or try to collect information for you, just reach out. So Surgery Plus, 
Um, and again, so this is just access to, I guess they're saying their surgery centers. Um, so when you enroll, you and your dependents are eligible for this benefit. Um, so if you have the surgery plus benefit, it will cover your surgery at 100%. So again, um, there's information on the surgical care if you need it, um, and it's you have to be in their network. Hopefully you don't need that, but if you do, it's there to look at. So this Blue Rewards is kind of like Blue Cross Blue Shield, their own little wellness program that you can log in and earn rally coins. So um, I encourage everyone to do that. My understanding is those rally coins can then be used to purchase things like wearables, tracking devices to keep track of your health. Um, but there are different activities. Um, and then, yeah, on fitness trackers and more, you can bid on rewards at auctions. You can use them to enter a sweepstakes or you can help a charity. So again, and that's just help to take advantage of your health and all right, so let's talk about the prescription drug plan. So um, our in-network cost for generic will be a $10 copay, and that applies on day one. There's no deductible to be met. Um, if you, some of the generic brand tier two um, are $10, and the pr preferred brand is 40, and then a non-preferred brand is 50. And then if you get to the specialty tier five, it's 75%, the minimum being $100 and the max being $250. Um, and then again, they offer the mail order 90 day supply that is done through Amazon Pharmacy Meds Your Way. Um, and so those are the costs there, $20 for a, three, a 90 day supply or three months. So there is some cost savings. Um, you can actually log on and start looking at the pharmacy benefits through the web link and we'll get again to that. But if you go on to look, you need to know that it is net results, five tier broad plus network. That is the network that we use for pharmacy. So if you go out to Blue Connect and try to um, look to see where pharmacies are available, that's what you need to select. It's a little drop down menu and it'll say, Sure. Net results, five tier, broad plus network. And that's if you go to the bluecrossblueshield.com um, slash content slash provider search. That's the link that was in the letter you received yesterday via email. <clears throat> and when you go there, there will be drop down boxes. So for the pharmacy plan, that is the network we use. Um, can you still get 90 days? at the retail so i that one says that it's mail order so i don't know that we can we can look into that specific question to see if you can still get the 90 days at retail at your local pharmacy so then our dental plan so we have changed to a new dental plan um, so it is now the annual deductible is $50 per person, which mirrors what we have now. Your annual maximum has increased. It was $1,000. Now your annual max is $1,250 per person. Um, preventative care is covered now at 100%. It was covered last year at 80%. So even if you just went to get your teeth cleaned, then you were paying 20%. Now pr anything preventative is covered at 100%. And that's with no deductible. That's with no deductible. Your basic services, um, fillings, the root canal, oral surgery is 20%. After that, $50 deductible. Um, major services are covered at 50%. And orthodontia is 50%, and it's up to the age 19. Um, and there's no deductible. The orthodontia lifetime max is 500 per person, which matches what we have had in the past. Is that just, a, it says dental PPO, is that just a flat plan, the dental PPO? Because I don't know if they, they have a premier and certain They is, do, and it's just it's the, just the PPO, yes. I couldn't find my dentist on their plan. So, and so what we, when we looked at the network, they kind of explained that basically then your dentist could then file that through them. Um, and we can find out more specific details. Okay. 
for you. If you I need. know several of us go to Edinburgh and they weren't yeah. on the, <coughs> the list. But this isn't that worth an hour that we're going to say. So that's what I was going to say. So yeah, that's it's like there really yeah. isn't a network. Right. No, and so that's the other unique part about dental insurance is that it's not really like the health insurance aspects of it. Um, but then it says here that if you receive from a non-participating, basically then you charge you more. They, right. right. So basically yeah. they'll cover yeah. it, but then your dentist yeah. can choose yeah. to yeah. Um, yeah. to yeah. to back bill basically. Right. Yeah. So it might be that you pay thirty or forty dollars. Yeah. I'm gonna figure that out. Because my husband has dealt with them too, but he has the premier and we own both plans, so I'm going to have to see how we're going to do it. Absolutely, to see. Well, and I think, and the other thought was that if Cigna was covering it, our former dental was covering it at 80%. You might not see really a, a change yeah, if it's out of that work. And then the vision plan, um, so it will be a $10 copay for an eye exam um, every 12 months. Your contact lens fit and follow up is up to $60. And then your frame allowance is actually increased, I believe, up to $150 allowance. Um, and you can get an extra $20 to spend on featured frame brands. Lenses are once every 12 months. So that's a $10 copay for single vision, 10 for bifocal, 10 for trifocal, um, 10 for standard progressive. Contact lenses are once every 12 months, and that's also $150 allowance. And then the other discounts and services, it's 15% off retail or 5% off promotional price. And you can get a 20% savings on unlimited additional pairs of prescription glasses. This is still on the VSP network, which I believe is what the network we were previously on. Um, and so that was pretty cut and dry on the vision plan, more or less the same as what we've had, just with an increase in the allowance. And a decrease in the copay, so it's well, much is better. It's yeah, so a decrease in the copay. I have not had vision, yes. so. Yep. Um, all right, so flexible spending accounts, just so that you have that information. If you're not using it, I would encourage you to use that. That is a savings to you. That money comes out pre-tax which means that lowers your taxable income. So at the end of the year, it looks like you made less than you really did, and you don't have to pay tax on that money. Um, the FSA plan year will run July 1st to June 30th. Um, if you are enrolled in this and you get the FSA card and you have to go to the doctor, you can use that card to pay your copay. So that's important. You can use it for prescriptions. Yes. What is happening with our current FSA? So, yep, so is it we are rolling over or is it so we are encouraging it? you to spend that as much as possible. However, what happens, there is a 90 day like grace period or a run out period basically for any claims incurred through June 30th to be paid out. And then what happens is they will then send that up to the there's a limit on what can be rolled over. Mm -hmm. But after 90 days, they can then send that file to Flores to take that over. Okay, so they are going to roll it. Okay. It'll take 90 days from the end of the plan year for the for the runouts. Okay, okay. But again, if you can spend down that FSA, I would spend down that FSA. There is a 610 amount there. 610 is, is the cap, and that's a federal limit. So that's what the rollover is. That's even if you kept... Even if we went with our current one, the rollover in years past, I think, was increased due to COVID. Um, and so you were allowed to roll over more than you might have regularly rolled over. But 610 is the cap that so you can six, have. So what we have right now, 610 would be the most that we can roll over. So. Okay. And will it automatically roll if there's a balance in that account mm -hmm. or do we have to request it? So what I will... Gallagher with NCHIP will also help to facilitate that process that so we will get one big file of everyone, right? So after that 90 day payout period, anything incurred by June 30th, and then we can work to roll that over. Um, I will say this, that um, on day one, you will be mailed a card if you sign up for FSA, a flex card that you can use like a debit or credit card to pay. And what Flores says is if your doctor's office or pharmacy has a coded chip reader swipe device that's coded to say this is a doctor's office, this is a pharmacy, when you use that card, it should automatically validate or substantiate that 
that claim, if you will, and you won't have to upload a receipt. Okay, great. Right? So in, in other words, as long as you use it somewhere like a doctor's office or the dentist's office or the pharmacy and it's coded on the reader, then they're saying that it substantiates about 95% of the claims. So, but let's suppose that you use it somewhere and it doesn't substantiate mm -hmm. that claim. There will be an app for your FSA that you can load on your phone and you can take a picture of the receipt from the app and just upload it. So it should be a much simpler process for substantiating your receipts. Um, also with Flores, we will have a 1-800 number that you can call them. And they said that they pride themselves on excellent customer service and they will answer the phone when you call and help you with whatever issue you might be having. Melissa? Yes. You said two names, Flores and Gallagher. Can you say again what they're putting? Yeah, absolutely. So Gallagher is our broker for NSHIP that kind of oversees everything. Flores is the carrier administrator for our flexible spending accounts for FSA and dependent care. Um, again, so we can point to Gallagher if we need them for any issue for any services that they provide, but Flores is the specific provider. Yes. yes. Flores replaces benefits. Yes, so Flores will replace Beneflex. We will no longer use Beneflex moving forward. <coughs> and again, I think you can actually, they have a website that I think, and it might be listed in your book that you can go out and kind of look at them, but they, um, my initial interactions with them was incredibly positive and they pride themselves on customer service and helping. So if, hopefully you don't need help. Hopefully it's a great benefit and it works just like we think it should. Is there a monthly fee for this one? So there is a, an administrative fee to administer that. Um, so actually, they will it will remain $3. It will not increase. They actually charge a little bit more, but the county manager and the finance director have agreed to cover that incremental extra cost so that we keep it the same. So this just kind of shows you the cost savings if you sign up for the FSA. Um, so here's your gross monthly income. And again, that's not gonna change, but your taxable income, you'll see if you were to put $200 for your medical insurance, $100 for medical expenses, that would be your FSA, and then dependent care, then basically you've just lowered your taxable income by $600. And that means when it comes time to pay taxes, you're only paying taxes on 1,900 rather than 2,500. And so when you look at the tax rates there, you'll see what you can save, right? So basically your monthly spending, spendable income, if you will, actually increases in theory because of the tax savings. Do you have any questions about that? Again, so if you don't use FSA, I would encourage you to sign up for it. It's a great benefit to have. So here are the monthly costs for coverage. So our monthly costs for medical coverage for an employee only will remain at $0. Um, this does not list it out, but if you are a dual employee, then that holds just like it has been. There is no cost for dual employee, dual employee, family, whatever you're currently covered under, it will remain the same. If you are an employee and you wish to cover your spouse, it will be $520 for the monthly fee, employee plus child is 280, employee plus children is 555, and employee family is 750. And again, those are monthly, so that will be split in two, and on months where you have a third payroll, you're not charged for that, so it's 24 deductions a year. Um, your monthly cost for dental coverage, again, um, employee is at zero, employee spouse is 2713, Employee plus children is eight eighty four, and the family cost is thirty four zero four. I believe that went down just a bit. So we're giving you better, better dental and coverage um, for less money. And then monthly cost for vision: employee is six twenty five, employee plus spouse is twelve forty nine. Employee plus children is thirteen thirty eight, and the family is twenty one thirty seven. And that also went down. 
all of those in and odd numbers are going to be a penny. Okay. <laughs> Did you hear that? So if you end in an odd number, an odd number doesn't really work out so well when we divide it in two. So it will actually be 2714 and 1250 and 2138 so that it all comes out when we split that in half because we can't take half a cent from you. You can give us half a cent. We gave you, you know what, I'm, I'm doing even better. I'm giving you like 50 cents back on the vision. Uh, That's great. And, uh, and we're giving you um, a hefty amount towards your medical. So it's definitely more I'm than a cent, right? I'm a six cents back at the end of the year. Absolutely, <laughs> right? We'll just tap that on to what we're giving you in your health benefits. So this um, information is super helpful right now. If you want to go and find out if your current provider is in network, um, which when we looked at it, they mapped out our network and it looks like about 98% of the physicians in the area are in network. Um, I think you'll find that we've got a pretty robust network, but that's the link that you can go to. When you go to that link, it's gonna ask you to select your network. We are blue options. That's important to know. So when you go for your provider search, um, and I don't know if it's if that's written in there, but you might want to write somewhere. Our network is blue options. That's like our sickness open access box. Exactly. Yep. So blue options, and then again, there's our pharmacy plan network. It's net results, five tier, broad plus network. Yeah. So with Cigna, we had the priority sources like. Um, yeah, so you'll notice in your benefits guide that there are some special programs. I have not heard specifically on a virtual physical therapy, but there are other programs that they do offer that are outlined throughout your book that we have at our disposal to use. Um, so I would encourage you to look at those. There are some, along with the telehealth, we've got um, behavioral health, mental health resources. There is the Livongo, which is for, I believe, diabetes support. Um, lots of really great programs that are available to you. So I encourage you to go through that guide, review all of that information, um, and see what's out there for you. Use those benefits. The pharmacy plan network. Um, where we choose that option. Is that the same website? Yes. So when you go to that provider search network, and then you can go through to look at your pharmacy benefits. And that's what, again, it'll be a drop down box. And there's like probably six or eight different options. And it's near the bottom. And you'll see it says net results five. And I think it's five C. Mm -hmm. um, but you'll see it net results five tier broad plus network. And that is our network. And that's how you can find a pharmacy to make sure that your current pharmacy is in network. You don't have some numbers in front of it too, but that's what you would look at. Yep. There. You probably had this on an earlier slide, but is there a deductible for the dental? Like there was a $50 deductible? Right here. There is. So, so your preventative is covered at 100%, but there is a deductible for the other services. So this is important contact information. So again, in this, um, take note of it. You can always reach out to me. I will happily help you. You can always reach out to um, NCHIP, to the concierge program, but these are specific for the medical prescription drug, the surgery provider, the dental. Um, that is not community eye care. That is not correct. Um, we are Delta on the eye care. Um, flexible spending account is Flores and Associates. So I think your vision in your book is correct. Yes. 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 So um, we were making planned decisions on Friday afternoon, and we got this on Sunday. So um, Gallagher was super helpful with all of that. So. Yes, we have been down to the last minute making sure that everything was lined up. But again, you can call anybody in HR, you can email me, and we're happy to help you, and especially on your individual situations if there's something that we can research or find out for you. But yeah, look at your guide first because there's a lot of information. Just say, there's. Already in there. <laughs> don't, ask, don't ask stupid questions. It's okay, you asked. Just say it.
right? There is there is a wealth of information in those benefit guides, um, and I think it's a snapshot view. I think they're super helpful to have that at your fingertips so that you can go through and look and see what do I have available. Yeah, that's what we've got for sure. Phone numbers and email addresses. Right? So thank you. I hope that you're excited about it. I think it's going to be a great change. We're super excited. Um, and we hope that you see this as a benefit because we appreciate you. I have one question. Yeah. Um, for all the husband and wife, does both, do both employees need to go into each EMF or ESS? Yes. Yes. So just like in years past for ESS, and again, so... Um, I know that we say it's active and that if you don't do anything, we're just basically you could risk not being covered, but um, we will call you or send you an email. You will know that you need to go do something. And so we'll make sure that we have everybody on board because we don't want you to miss out on anything. FSA. So for instance, you roll over the 610, does it limit you on how much you can add for this year? maximum three three thousand yeah but i don't know that that so in other words does a rollover impact your max because i think that that maximum election is for this year you're mm -hmm. electing that for this year and then that rollover is in addition to that okay, okay. the rollover should be completely separate because that was elected in last plan year it's not coming out so i, I think that part of that's like the taxable basically you can't just put all your money in there to avoid paying taxes on it but only that amount that you're taking out is what they're looking at for this year for the tax benefit okay the rollover has already been dealt with in a prior year any other questions all right so on may 1st you're all ready to go you can make your decisions log into ess make sure you have your dependent social security numbers dependent birthdays um, go in and complete all of that information. If you need help, you can call us. And it should be the pretty simple and self-explanatory because it's ESS like we've used in years past. So that'll be open from May 1st through May 15th. So get in there and sign up for the benefits. Yay. Well, y'all have a great day. Thank you for your time. And like I said, if you need anything, call us. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely.